Hey, Love the Freaks, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Amanda. And I'm Hannah. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. If you like things strange and unusual and true crime, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe or follow button. You can also head down to the description box and you'll see a link that will take you to our link tree that'll give you access to our social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that jazz. And all that jazz. Yeah. All right, so we're back. Um, we, hold on, I'm trying to get to my thing. Okay. Um, we're back. We don't have a lot to go over today before we get started, but I do want to say that we have a community tab now on our YouTube. I kept wanting to say Twitter. And we did a vote to see what you guys wanted to hear, and um, you guys picked something creepy. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And this has to do with, like, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Warren? Lauren. Lauren. Um, so we'll be posting a lot more stuff on our community tab. Um, we also will be posting on Twitter and stuff like that as well. But just be on the lookout for things. I was super excited that we got it. You should, usually on YouTube you had to have like, I don't know, so many before you could get a community tab. But they changed that. YouTube is kind of going downhill. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. Because we have Spotify and all that. You could do some ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they can hear that. It was a brush. Um, I'm going to put that down because I'm going to start tapping it. Okay. So today we're going to talk about the Smeryl family. And um, this has to do, like I said, with Ed and Lor- Lorraine L- Warren. God, I can never say her name fast. Um, and we get a lot of our content from their cases because there's so many to deal with. Uh, which is really good, I guess. Not for the people. And as always... Like we say, when we talk about these, don't, we kind of go into this with an open mind. I'm not saying whether they did have these experiences or they didn't. I don't know. I'm not going to say that somebody didn't have an experience like this um, because it's kind of hard to prove, you know, if you've seen ghosts or not, it's really hard to prove. You just have to kind of believe somebody. So let's get started. Jack and Janet Smurl along with their young daughters and Jack's parents, all moved into the duplex on Chase Street in West Pitson, Pennsylvania. Gosh. In 1973. It's a tongue twister today. Um, After their house got damaged in a flood. And I think it was actually a hurricane, but the flood came from the hurricane. The duplex, however, was owned by Jack's parents, and they had actually rented it out. Um to other tenants so they had been renting it out i think an old woman lived in one side an older man lived in the other um before they came and moved in they had the whole house or the duplex shall i say inspected and made sure like you know everything was good and ready to go before they moved in also the people um that had lived there previously i think the older man passed away but the the older lady she was renting it out to people um which i thought was really odd i don't know how she was able to do that but whatever so they also um jack and janet were very um they were very into catholicism they were catholic and so they were really into their faith they went to mass every sunday so that's something to note that they were um very religious uh, Catholic people that get the wrong end of the stick. It really is when it comes to these sort of demonic things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't really know. I'm not Catholic, so I'm, I've read some things about it, but apparently Catholics are more susceptible to possessions and demonic things. I don't understand why. It's really weird. Yeah, I mean, that's gotta suck, though. So, the duplex that they moved into was built to... <laughs> was built to I cannot talk today was built in 1896 so it's a pretty old house the town that they were living in was very small and they didn't have the whole duplex to themselves they lived on the north side and um Jack and Janet uh, Jack's parents lived on the south side so um lived on and it was divided in half it wasn't top and bottom so they lived there for 18 months before things started happening. 
So on January 1974 was when strange things started to occur all over the house. Now, I will say there, there could have been something, like, going on before this. But because they were doing, like, they were moving in and they were doing renovations. And they were just not really at the house a lot because they were trying to, like, get into their community and, and go do a lot of things and make friends and be at church a lot and stuff like that. So they probably, there probably was some small things going on, but they just didn't really notice it until 18 months later. Because a lot of people were like, that's a long time for something to happen. Like, why was it so long? But that could be the reason. Mm. They also, um, like I said, they also were renovating the house because there needed to be upgrades done to it. Because it was pretty much, like, had never been upgraded um, since, I don't know, like the 20s or something like that. So, they, they had a lot of upgrades to do. So, the first thing they start that started to happen was there were, they put new carpet down. And there was a stain that appeared on the carpet. So it was kind of like an oily grease spot. And they would clean it. And it would go away. And then the next day it would come back. Mm. They did this for like a week. Over and over. Until finally they said screw it. And they went and got a new carpet to lay down. And that one didn't have that problem after that. Mm. One night while Jack this is the dad of the family, was watching TV. It all of a sudden burst into flames. Not like it was, uh, like, not like it was a small burst, but like it exploded. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of different things that were catching fire over the course of the next couple of days, too. Like, um, I think there was like a microwave or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of different stuff that was like catching fire randomly. They just chalked it up to, okay, well, it's faulty electrical wiring because this house is old. They also, the plumbing in the house was always messed up and they were constantly having to fix it. But they chalked that up to, okay, it's just old, faulty stuff. But if you think about it, like, some of that stuff could be explained by, like, a poltergeist. Especially, like, lights flickering and things like that. Because that's how demonic manifestation starts. We've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. So, those things were kind of happening happening during this time. One thing, though, that they couldn't explain was one morning they woke up to brand new porcelain tub that was installed in the parents' uh, bathroom. It had been completely destroyed. There were cracks, chips, and it looked like basically a bear had, like, come in there and just, like, tore it up because there were scratches on it, too. They also started to see what looked like fresh claw marks on the ceiling and walls when it had just been painted. Like, they would come out in the morning and look on the, um, and probably, if I had to guess, it was probably wallpaper. Yeah. Because that's what they did in the 70s. So, the wallpaper would be, like, like a big slash mark Mm -hmm. down it. Stuff like that. In 1975, daughter Dawn would, she would, like, run, she would start waking up in the middle of the night. And she would start running into, um, their room. And she said that she saw people floating in her room and of course when Jack went to check there was like nothing there but that she did that a few times um and she also would say that she'd see shadows and stuff like that but there was nothing ever there so in 1977 they had twins Shannon and Karen after the twins were born they said that things pretty much got like super intense after this Toilets would flush on their own. Radios would turn on and off by themselves. Doors would open and close by themselves. And also, they would have cold spots all in the house. Not so... Not cold spots like, you know, oh, there's a chill in the air. But, like, literally, you could see your breath when you'd walk to a certain place. They also would hear footsteps upstairs. The house was also um, started to smell very bad. And we've heard this before um, in multiple different ones that we've done where the, like, You'll start smelling, smelling bad something. smells and stuff like that. Which I never understood that. Like, how does that... I guess because demons smell bad? I don't mm-hmm. know. Oh, well, really? that's, that's... I mean, I guess that's... Essentially what they think. What they think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jack even said that at one point he was down by his bed praying. And he, was, he had, like, his rosary and everything. It was just his nightly prayers. And as he was saying the prayers, all of a sudden he could smell, like, a foul smell in the in the mm-hmm. bedroom. And it, he didn't think anything of it during this time because they still don't think anything sinister is going on. But looking back on it, he was like, oh, shit. Um, after all this, 
they started to think, okay, maybe something bad is happening. Like, after all this stuff started happening. Essentially, um, Janet was the first one to kind of... And it's always the wife. <laughs> the men are... The, I guess because in this situation, she was at home all the time. She was a stay-at-home mom. And he... Trying to remember what he did. I can't remember what he did, but he was he went to work. That's true. So they do stay he at only home really home. saw things at night. Yeah. And so she was there all the time. And so she was like, No, shit's shit's going on. Mm. Because one time she was in the basement doing laundry, which first of all, fuck that. Mm-hmm. If I have to go to the basement to do laundry, if I have a basement in my house, like we need to move. But so she was in the basement doing laundry and she said she felt like she wasn't alone. And then she said that she felt like someone calling her name. Like, Janet, Janet. And so she would turn around. Nobody was there. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. So after about 10 months of this craziness going on, toilets flushing, all the stuff going on, bad smells, Janet finally having enough, they decide that they're going to start to get some answers. They started out trying to look into a logical part, which was researching. So this house was built in a mining community. And so they wanted to see if maybe there was a mine shaft in the basement. Maybe maybe that's why she was hearing things. Maybe it wasn't really her name. It was just different sounds. And also maybe that's why, um, you know, the house would creak because if there was a mine underneath their house, then the ground is shifting. And so that's why their house is creaking and stuff like that. That would make sense. Yeah. So that's what they did. They actually got in touch with a mining foundation that came out and started to investigate and they found nothing. There was no mines anywhere near their house, around their house, nothing like that. After this, they started seeing scratches not only on the walls and the ceilings, but also on each other. They didn't want to believe it was, you know, a haunted thing or demonic presence. Um, But... Which is crazy to me because most Catholic people, like, they usually think that right off the bat, you know? Yeah. Um, But things kept getting worse. Jack's parents would hear from, like, their side of the duplex, they would hear arguments going on. Like, almost like like people yelling and screaming at each other and fighting. Mm. And they would go over there and be like, oh my god, what's going on? Like, thinking... (laughs) Maybe Jack's, like, beating the shit out of Janet. And nothing. Like, they were like, what are you talking about? Um, Mm. Excuse me. Um, Janet Janet and and Jack would fill freezing spots, like I said, everywhere. And the scratches, of course, like I said, they were going on daily. Then Janet started to see a huge black figure in the kitchen. And she was in the kitchen one day and she saw this like black figure, like a mist type of thing come up. And then it went into the wall and then her mother-in-law saw it on the other side in their duplex. So the, the in-laws in this never, Jack's parents, they never really experienced as much stuff as Jack and Janet and all them on that side. But I think it's probably because whatever this was, was attaching itself to the family and the, the family. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get mostly more in depth than that. Or... Uh, mostly Jack. And we'll okay. talk more about that. So the night, well, uh, one night their oldest daughter, Heather was going to be confirmed like in the church, like Catholic confirmation, which I don't know if that's essentially like our baptism type, how we baptize. Um, but she was going to be confirmed in, in there, in, in the church. And a huge light fixture came down on their youngest daughter. So she was like walking through wherever. And this light fixture just dropped. And it almost killed her. Um, and so they couldn't, I guess, like make it. It's almost like the spirit like knew. Like you're going to be confirmed. And I don't want that to happen. You know, or something like that. It was weird. So, Janet was also violently pulled from her bed one night. And something... So, she... Hold on. Sorry. She was pulled from her bed. And uh, Jack, like, could hear her, obviously. So, it was essentially... Kind of reminds me of... uh, Oh, gosh. No. 
paranormal activity oh. where she's getting dragged out of the bed, which mm-hmm. really sucks. So while this is going on, though, she's screaming, yelling, and Jack is trying to get up, but he's being like almost choked by this smell, like this horrible mm-hmm. smell. And it's not like physically being choked, but like it's so bad that he can't, like he's choking, oh. like he's throat, like trying to throw up, I guess is what mm-hmm. you could say. So yeah, that shit's crazy. Then Jack starts to levitate off the bed. And at the, after this, they were like, okay, something's going on. The dog, they um, had like a German shepherd. This poor dog would randomly just get like tossed across the room. Aww. They would just be sitting. He, he was fine. He survived and all that. But he would just randomly get tossed across the room and just, uh, he would get spanked almost. Like, like. Mm. I guess that's what they thought was going on because he would be sitting there and all of a sudden it was almost like somebody popped him on the butt and he would, you know, and take off running. So, um, they constantly heard noises. It kind of reminded me of the infield poltergeist when we talked about that, which is the Conjuring 2 movie. Um, and, you know, it just got to the point where it was unbe- like unbearable to deal with because there was constant something going on. The kids were also being pulled out of their beds. The neighbors in the neighborhood even would report that they heard like yelling and screaming going on. Sometimes even when the family wasn't there. Lights would flicker on and off constantly even when the family wasn't there. And they finally had enough. So they decided to seek help from the church. Their priest, however, said that they said that he couldn't help and that they had to get approval from the Vatican like always. And the Vatican said that they were not willing to help either, which is not uncommon. We've heard that before. So in 1986, they heard about the Warrens, and they decided to seek their help. Janet actually went to a lecture that they were having at a college to try to get help from them. The Warrens brought with them another psychic medium when they came to the house and a registered nurse, just to make sure that the family wasn't having a mental breakdown, (laughs) Um, and so they'd cover all their bases. The Warrens asked them if there was anyone in the house that tried to communicate with the dead, like a Ouija board, and they also asked them, you know, are y'all Satanists or anything like that, to which Jack and Janet were like, absolutely not, and we don't mess around with stuff like that, we're devout Catholics, like, Mm -hmm. nobody in this house is doing that. So Ed and Lorraine said that, that maybe whatever was, like, this, the entity was, was latched itself to them, um because of how strong their faith was Mm. and maybe it wasn't something necessarily that happened in the house it could have been outside of the house or you know just don't know so when they came to the house they said that they could um feel a lot like lorraine said that she could feel a lot of paranormal activity so ed took his relics of he's he's a demonologist we've Mm. talked about that and so his relics were like Rosary, crosses, um, different things. Some of the stuff that he had actually came from the Vatican. So he took it upstairs. He laid it on the bed. And when he did and he, you know, was getting ready to do his prayers or whatever, the TV started turning on and off and things started flying all around the room. Lorraine said that she could feel four evil spirits in the house. Three of them were human-like spirits that were mad but weren't uh, evil in a sense, like could hurt you. But the fourth one she said was definitely a demonic presence and she said that you know at, at, at this point she could tell that this was something that had probably always been in the house however the reason why things got worse and worse was be- or like over time was because um number one we've talked you know the family's faith and number two the smurls had small children and we talked about things got worse after the twins were born so, the Warrens believe, as a lot of demonologists and mediums and things like that, <clears throat> they believe that children help to kind of, like, raise the energy of hauntings. That's mm-hmm. why children are so much more susceptible to hauntings and to see ghosts and spirits and things like that because of their energy. Mm-hmm. They're feeding off their energy, I guess, because they're new to the earth. I don't really know how that works, but whatever. Maybe demons think they're cute. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Ed would try to get the demon to show itself, so that way they could figure out, you know, what's going on. He would use 
old orthodox chantings on a recording and ed said that this would make the demon very angry and the mirrors and the furniture in the house would shake they also did this another time and the demon spelled out i don't know how it spelled this out it didn't specify but it's somewhere it either spelled it out or something um you filthy bastard get out jack and janet at this point the two of them they started to see bite marks on themselves so janet also was at the house one day i don't know if she was alone or whatever but she decided to ask this presence some questions <clears throat> she said knock once for oh, once for yes That's not yeah a good idea. once for yes and twice for no and and uh she asked it are you here to hurt us and it just knocked once for mm. yes so, yeah. Things get a little weird after this because Jack was reportedly, and this is going to happen a lot during this case now, from now on. Um, Jack was raped by a succubus, which looked like a scaly woman. That's what he said. And whether you believe him or not, that's up to you. Wow. It's okay. hor it horribly traumatized him is what he said. Um, a scaly woman. A scaly mm. woman succubus. And I was trying to look it up, like folklore type situation. I couldn't find... Now, there are succubus. I mean, that's a thing. A lot of people... A lot of people have claimed to be raped or, you know, sexually assaulted by a demon. Um, so, but that one specifically, I couldn't, couldn't find. But if anybody knows, if you've heard of a scaly succubus... Drop it in the comments. Um, so, <laughs> Janet also said that she was touched inappropriately by an unseen force at this time as well. Mm -hmm. They started to hear animal noises in the walls, which creeps me the fuck out because it was like sounds of like goats and pigs being oh slaughtered. Lord. Like that kind of sound. And that would... Uh, I'd be like, gotta go. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know why they have not left yet, but whatever. Ed and Lorraine... Were trying to help them the best that they could, but they were unable to expel the demon because that's out of their wheelhouse. Like, that's not something that they do. All they can do is really gather evidence to try to take to the church and be like, hey, they really need this exorcism. Like, come on now. Get to the house. Yeah. So, the family reached out to multiple exorcists in the area to come out, but no one wanted to help them. At one point, Janet got a visit from a priest named Father O'Leary. She thought, okay, awesome. This guy's going to help us. This guy is going to, like, you know, really do some stuff for us. And, and he came to the house, I guess he heard through, like, the news or something, like, around town. The grapevine. Yeah. So she walked him to the house and everything. And when he left, she told Ed. And after doing some research, they found out it was never, wasn't a real person. So Ed thinks that this demon... Mm -hmm. is so strong that it possessed someone to come wow. and try to pretend like it was a priest. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. That's what that's what his theory was because they did research like they tried to find out this father or Larry like who is this and this person did not exist like mm -hmm. at all. Ed after this was like adamant about we need to go to the Vatican we need to get help. So father he, he knew a priest named Father McKenna, and he was, he used to work for the Vatican, but he decided to um, step away from it because he didn't like their law, their rules and stuff that they had. I'm, I'm assuming probably because he didn't like the fact that people had to, like, jump through hoops to try to get an exorcist to come to their house. So, he had worked with the Warrens before, and he decided to help them. He came to the house to do an exorcism and would start um like saying his prayers and his blessings but things didn't really change after this unfortunately the family started to get very ill after this and even one of the daughters almost died from a mysterious fever mm. the children were also showing up with bites and scratches and bruises all over them and basically like the next morning after they were seamlessly fine at night ed and lorraine were there pretty much the whole time and we've heard this before that they stay there at the house like they don't just go 
look at stuff and then leave. Like, they actually live there in this stuff with the families. So, Father McKenna came to perform another exorcism, but yet again, it did not work. Um, the family went away for a camping trip because they were like, okay, we're going to get away. Like, this, we got to go. Um, you know, nothing's going to happen to us while we're out of the house. Unfortunately, it was too late um, for them to, get for it to matter. Demon. Yeah, for it to matter. Because, yeah. obviously, this demon had latched itself onto Jack is what the the thought is and um while they were camping it bothered them the, jack would even get bothered like at work with different things that would go on so the smurls were very distraught after this and they were like okay the last exorcism didn't work and the vatican's not willing to help us so we gotta figure out something to do so they went to the newspapers and the news stations which some people are like that just makes you seem like you're trying to get, like, attention. But at the same time, I don't know, because half of the freaking neighborhood knew about it. I mean, it's not like... Yeah. And they didn't purposely, like, go out to the neighbors and be like, hey, come see this shit. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? They, I think they want attention because they want the church to yeah. be like, oh, like... And that was their know? thought process. Like, if they got attention, even if it was the wrong kind of attention, maybe the church would be like, oh, shit, we got to... We gotta wrap this up because yeah. we can't have this wearing about. Unfortunately, this didn't help them. This only made things worse because people thought, like I said, that they were just looking for attention. Things got worse with the uh, demonic presence as well after this. It's almost like it knew. Jack and Jill can. <laughs> Jack and Jill. Jack, Jack and, Jill and ran Janet. Up the hill. Jack and Janet continue, continued to get sexually assaulted and raped after this, both of them. Which, we've talked about sexual assault, like I said, on a, a demonic sexual activity. I'll get in a minute. And a lot of people actually have said that they've experienced this. Like, I've, I've, done, I've went through some Reddit posts and there's been a lot of people that have said they experienced it. Mm. Like, sex with a demon. That's basically what it is. It's, it's I mean, really weird. Awful. If I was single. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if late nights <laughs> get a little lonely. It reminds me of, uh, I'm not making fun of this situation, but it reminds me of, I think it's Scary Movie that makes fun of that. Oh, or the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And she's like into it or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's the first one. Yeah. Or, yeah. But anyways, so one of their neighbors named Paul Kurtz, who's a douche, he believed that the family was just saying all this to get book deals and television deals. He was also the chairman of Scientific Investigation of the Paranormal. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> it's, I had to think about that. He reached out to the Smurls and wanted to investigate the house on his own. He was like, hey, I'm going to put you guys up in a hotel. I'm going to pay for everything. You stay there for like a couple of nights. I'm going to give you money to eat. All this stuff. And I want me and my team of scientists to come and study this house and actually see what's going on. Um, the Smurls declined, which people thought was really strange. Hmm. But they said that they felt like he had already made up his mind about them. And if, let's say, if this demon has already, like, impersonated people. I mean, not impersonated, but uh, showed yeah. himself yeah. as a person. And all this other crazy shit that's going on. They were thinking, just because you come doesn't mean that, that this demon's going to do anything. Plus, yeah. we're going to a hotel they're it's gonna probably going to follow, follow us, us there. Yeah. So, you know, it followed us to, on the camping trip. So, why would we you do this? Um, so, at this point, they knew that the demon, like, its intuition was kind of, like, crazy. Kurtz wrote an article after this, and he said that basically, like, nothing's going on. They're lying. They're just trying to get publicity. He also said that they were... Um, there were no police reports of this activity, which Janet did say. She said that she called the police and told them, like, something's going on in my house, um, you know, strange noises and all this stuff, but there wasn't a report of it, which could be explained by the fact that the police were probably like, okay, ma'am, well, you have a good yeah, night. Like, like you would, they're not going to fucking write that out. To me- I would not call the police. Well, what she did. She did call the police. This yeah. is what she said. But they're saying, like, well, there's not enough police reports. Like, 
Yeah. No one's going to call the police. Now, in Infield Poltergeist, they did call the police because she actually thought, you know, somebody was in their house, the one in England, and mm-hmm. um, there was a report on that. But, yeah, I mean, the police just probably could have been like, okay, crazy lady, have a good night. <laughs> you know. So, Kurtz did, however, think there was an opportunity to make money off of this. And, like I mentioned, he said that there were movie production companies already in talks with the family. Which the Smurls said was completely untrue. And that they wouldn't um, make this these things up. Like, they're not going to make these things up. Kurtz wanted the Warrens to release footage. Because, like we've talked about before. Which I do think this is weird. This, this part, it always gets me. Um, the Warrens always record everything when they go to a house. And they have tapes of the infill poltergeists and conjuring, you know, so those different situations. And, um, or the parent family. So, they've never released the tapes. Ed claims in this one, and he's claimed before, that he's released the tapes to the church. But the church always says, we ain't got no damn tapes. Which, one or two things could be true. Either he could have released them to the church and he doesn't want the footage out to the public because maybe it could stir up some sort of demonic forces Mm -hmm. and the church is saying no because believe it or not the catholic church it's almost like yes we do believe in demonic possession and things like that but we also don't don't want to report about it yeah we don't want people to know yeah it's weird so reporters go ahead do you think that the reason they don't want people to know because if more people know about it and accept it then more demons will come, maybe? I don't know. I don't because know, Catholic weird. people are more... So, like, people will research it more and get more depth than the Catholic Church. Maybe. I don't know. It could be that. Reporters also asked Ed if they could... Ed Warren, if they could stay in the house. Um, and, like, you know, could we stay and, like, try to see if we could capture anything, blah, blah, blah. And Ed was like, no, you're not going to berate this family and, like do that which was a good thing i mean it was good that you said that so after all the news footage or news coverage um the archdiocese decided that he wanted this to stop and he decided to come to the house and pray over it and help father mckenna yeah father mckenna came a third time december 1986 but this time he brought three priests um the third exorcism at uh, the third exorcism, however, didn't work again. For a couple of months, though, they were completely unbothered. And they thought, okay, maybe it is going to work. But it didn't. Jack saw a black figure again in the house after about uh, about two or three months. Oh, I went too far on my scrolly thing. And um, so after he saw that, things started like tick up again. And he was like, yeah, you know, shit. Now, there were a lot of Catholics who believe, well, most of them, that if you do not get a um, exorcist, or do you, no, if you do not get consent from the Vatican, which the Archdiocese is just the main person over all those Catholic churches where they live. So that's the archdiocese. So they didn't, still didn't get permission from the Vatican to do this exorcism. So a lot of Catholics believe if you don't have like the, which I don't understand how the hell a demon knows this, but if you don't have consent from the Vatican, it's not going to work. Like your exorcism is not going to work. Don't have a clue how that, that happens. I don't know. So the Smurl family moves after this because they didn't want to go through this again. And they were like, okay, we're, we're getting out of here. Like, we're done. And um, this was in 1988. But, unfortunately, um, when they moved into their new house, the activity followed them. Damn. After this, and they, I'd, they had a lot of problems in their new house, um, finally... The Vatican was like, okay, we'll help ya. Oh my god. <laughs> and, um, now I think it's interesting because if they, like, they had a book deal right before they moved. Like, what was it? Oh, they, they decided they were gonna move. And then, like, 
six months later, they got a book deal. And a lot of people were like, oh, they got a book deal. But why would they move? Yeah. If you got a book deal from something that you know, they got the book deal first. That's what it was. So why would you move? Because if anything, I would want to like bring people to the house. If you're going to get a book deal and be like famous or exactly. some shit like that, you know, I would want people to, you know, you could charge money for people to come see the house or something mm-hmm. like that. So the priest from the Vatican finally came in 1989 in their new house. He performed their last exorcism and it worked because after this, they had absolutely no more issues like forever through life. Good. The kids didn't. The wife didn't. I think that Jack actually died of cancer. Mm. No, no. Diabetes. Um, in 2017, I believe. So the, the father died. But nothing, nothing bad. So, So, how long did the haunting happen? So, from 70... What did I say? 74 to 89. Mm, Yeah, 74 to 89. 10 years? About 14 years? Yeah, something like that. Um, 15. 15 Yeah, 15 years. That's a long time. It's a long time. But it gradually started you know just small stuff um gradually got worse they lived there eight well i say 74 but it may have been may have been like 76 because they lived there for 18 months before anything started happening Mm. so that's the end of the story and that's the smurl family's experiences and even the house today people have lived in it on and off and nobody's ever experienced anything like that which makes me think that it probably was something that just attached itself to the family family. well if they got rid of the demon of course it's not going to be there yeah and obviously it followed them wherever they went yeah but um i don't know what do you guys think like do you believe in it i mean it's really hard to say like you can't just you can't say Oh, no, that definitely didn't happen. Because you have no idea. Like, you weren't there. <laughs> sure. So, I mean, I, I don't I know. I feel like it might have been, a, like, a female demon that kind of, like, was attracted to John. Yeah. Or just the demon that was attracted to John. I think we've we've had an episode before where the father was not getting as much... What, what was that? Um, I think it was the Perrin family. Wasn't it the Conjuring? Yeah. The, yeah. I was just saying, the dad the wasn't getting bothered as much by the demon to the point where he didn't even believe that this stuff was going on, really. Yeah. Until it started really amping up where it was, like, in his face. But he wasn't getting, like, messed with. And then he was actually getting, like, caressed on the shoulder and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but John, I mean, but Jack in this, the Smurl family, he definitely was being raped by a woman at night some sort of succubus yeah. and then um the, actually the kids also said that they started to experience things touching them in the middle of the night too mm-hmm. so that's horrifying for a child yeah um a lot of therapy to go through yeah but i don't know what's going on with them today i couldn't find any information out about them so obviously they didn't get rich from their book deal uh there is a movie called haunting i believe it's got like two or three stars um mm-hmm. i didn't watch it but there's speculation that this is the next case that they're going to do in the fourth installment of the conjuring so mm-hmm. um we'll see but yeah so that's the that's it that's all we got for you today so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode um be on the lookout for all of our different activity on our community tab now and like comment subscribe all that good stuff and we'll see you guys next week bye Bye.